Itai, oh, have you seen the red eyed tree frog? We can't find it. <laughs> so, this right here is a Seba tree or a Kapok. And uh, what's interesting about this tree is that in ancient Mayan and Aztec cultures, this was the most sacred tree. They used to always put their uh, you know, main temples next to the biggest Seba tree. And they often said that the roots went down to the depths of the earth and the branches reached up to the heavens. Super sacred. And then in other cultures, like here in Costa Rica, they cut them down and use them for formaleta, which is the cheapest, crappiest wood there is. It's like used to use like cement um, framing. They use this wood. And it, what's so interesting is in one culture, how something could be so sacred and in another, it could be just total crap. At the time, I was working really hard to get thatch roof. And thatch roof, this kind especially, the sweet though, which is the better kind, is really scarce now. A lot of people came in and just cleared it, um, overused it, didn't replant it, didn't just harvest what they needed. So it became really hard to get. And then even legally, it became really hard to move. Like they made it like illegal to cut it. So you couldn't even get it anymore because it was going endangered. So what I said was, why wouldn't we, if, if thatch is something that we need around here, why wouldn't I plant it and make a renewable, basically, roof factory right here in an area that I can't do much else in, in the understory? So if you look around here, you see lots of thatch palms. The center ones to grow, you got the older ones, and you kind of lay them one halfway on top of the last one, all the way through on a cane, and then you just go up and tie the canes one on top of the other. I told you. <laughs> wow, oh. that's nice. <laughs> smell his hair, it smells awesome and it's very good for your hair. It smell. It's called awafui. You're starting to see it in like body shop and a, a lot of the uh, a lot of those companies are starting to use it. Yeah, it smells good. really, really good. The nitrogen fixer always creates the edge along these beds. Like so you can come in and coppice something, you can just throw it all in the Malanga patch. All that you coppice. Like a lot of times in Thailand what you'll see is you'll see these big rice patties. And all of the edges of the rice patties are just like thick cuttings of nitrogen and fruit trees every once in a while. But it basically creates these like paddocks of farming. Instead of yeah. dealing with weeds and, uh, and piperaceas, you just have nitrogen fixers pumping up the soil with <coughs> nitrogen. And before they even make seeds, you walk around and you chop and you plant whatever you want. So you have the cupuaçu, which is the Brazilian cacao. You have a little bit of tilo at its base. And then you yeah, have the coleus ground cover, which is beautiful. And look how this area just starts getting shaped. And then you have the marker plant, just in case we abandon the place and just let it go. We'll be able to find the tree because the marker's here. You can see that through anything. Is that the Central American uh, brucensis? Yeah, it's the Central American brucensis. All right. <laughs> what is this called? Ice cream bean. You like suck the pulp around, around the seed and it tastes like vanilla ice cream. I knew these were here. Wow. And I'm talking top of tall that was thick, like this. I mean, we literally, we'd cut these trails through it. And uh, we'd go in and we'd plant, you know, overstory fruit trees, smaller fruit trees. we put in ground covers. we put in some nitrogen fixers. we put in some hardwoods. You'll see some mistakes. You'll see some successes. But let's start walking in. How we moved through the farm, through slightly older food forest or recently planted food forest and then towards older fruit forest and then to the edge of zone four where we have like building material crop of bamboo and hardwoods on the forest edge mm -hmm. and so we are extending the edge of the forest of the native forest way inwards into the farm well that smells great what are we having we're having pizza squash pizza and yummy salad you propagate bananas, not from seed because we don't make seeds. You just dig the, the, the shoots out and you plant the shoots. You can even cut them if you need to transfer them longer distance, just with a machete, just here. And then you plant the bulb. If you look at how banana naturally like spreads out, they make the circle because if there is a mother plant and then a year later it dies and all the shoots around it starts shooting up and they die and their shoots are spreading out all fall in a circle so we kind of follow the natural growth pattern of banana okay so we have to manage them less and enjoy the fruit more and what is the hole for well it, it's multifunctional in drier climates it's to as we talked about the zai hole it's to retain humidity 
and uh, build fertility. <laughs> and here in the in the tropics, it's mostly to build fertility. So what we'll use this hole for is uh, as a mulch basin. It's another cool place where you can dump your kitchen waste. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. You can see there being a counselor that would work with you all through college to really figure out what you want to do with your life. But there's not really anything like that. You know, there's a counselor that works with you on how to get your major. You know, how you can meet the requirements that the university system has um, set forth to then graduate. But there hasn't, there's not really any kind of, or, and if there is, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, I'm old. But when I went to college, like, I never, no one ever asked me what I wanted to do. I was a history major, mostly because it was kind of easy. What did you learn from your university? What you're gonna do with all that useless knowledge? You can't eat your PhD. <laughs> oh no, you can't eat your PhD. No, no. An idea cannot be suppressed if it is valid and appropriate. That makes good sense right there. summed experience, hundreds, even thousands of years of field experience. No one can come close to that. No one ever has. And as all government people need salaries, no one will ever catch up. <laughs> <laughs>